Regina Sanchez here, your spiritual life and health coach. Welcome to my podcast, giving you a fresh start. My heart is to help you revive the joy in your life, rejuvenate your God-given destiny, and restore your body to health. Grab a cup of tea, a cup of coffee, or a glass of spring water with a splash of lemon and sit back. Take notes if you can, and enjoy the teaching I'm about to embark on. Let's get started giving you a fresh start. Good morning, friends. Welcome to my podcast, Giving You a Fresh Start. Regina Sanchez here, your spiritual life and health coach, believing in you. Thanks for joining me today. It's Friday here for me as I'm recording this um, podcast. I'm not sure what it'll be for you when you um, listen, but I'm so glad you're here and I'm so glad that you've clicked on to my podcast, giving you a fresh start. And so I ask you, do you need a fresh start today? Is life overwhelming for you? Are you feeling like there are constant roadblocks in your way? Do you just want to throw your hands in the air sometimes and give up? Let me tell you, I can relate to that. I've been there so many times. But when I found out that Christ made me a new person or a new creation, things actually began to change. (laughs) So let's dive into my next teaching. Do you know that you've been made new? That's exciting. I love this scripture. And I'm going to read it to you in the Passion Translation from 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 19. And, and this scripture is going to be um, what I'm going to be basing my teaching on today. It says there now, if anyone is enfolded into Christ, he has become an entirely new person. All that is related to the old order has vanished. Behold, everything is fresh and new. And if God has made all things new and reconciled us to himself and given us the ministry of reconciling others to God. Yes, he's made all things new. He's reconciled us to us. And now we have a job to do, my friends. There's so much in the scripture that I actually kind of had to dismantle it. Um, I'm going to start with kind of line by line in a sense. And the first part is now, if anyone is enfolded into Christ. Well, what does enfold mean? Well, you guys know me that when I want to, um, de- you know, dig into a uh, an understanding of, of a word or the word, um, I go to uh, Webster's Original Dictionary from 1828. So it was interesting. The word enfolded was not found, <laughs> but the word, the word fold was. And the first definition of fold is a pen or an enclosure for sheep, a place where a flock of sheep is kept, whether in the field or under a shelter. So if we are enfolded, that means we're brought to a place as sheep in shelter. So this means that we're in a place of protection. We are under him, shielded in him, protected in him. And as our shepherd, he will not allow any animal to attack us. A shepherd walks around with a rod and a staff to protect their sheep. The rod is a symbol of the shepherd's strength, power, and authority. He utilizes this rod to protect not only his sheep, but also himself. And that staff, it's an instrument used only with sheep. No other animals uses that um, that staff or that rod. It wouldn't work with a horse or a pig or any cattle. The shape of it is designed for the needs of sheep. The shepherd uses the staff then to guide the sheep to move in the right direction. So the rod is used to pull the sheep out of maybe a situation. The staff is used to guide them and move them along. And he will use the hook of that rod or that staff to grab a hold of the sheep that might uh, be led astray. 
So know that we are enfolded into Christ as sheep are enfolded in a pen or enclosure for their safety. That's exciting. Next, next line I want to, uh, line of scripture that I want to address is he has become an entirely new person. So now if we are enfolded into Christ, we have become an entirely new person. Okay. We are enfolded in his pen under his care and we are an entirely new person. Did I say that enough times? It's amazing. It's wonderful. Isn't that encouraging? We have become an entirely new person. Who was that old person in you? For me, one of the issues was thinking and believing I was stupid. That name was placed upon me most of my childhood. I was stupid. Whether it was spoken to me, implied, or something I deduced about myself. But it was a definition that I had of myself for most of my childhood. You know, and even into my adult adult life. But according to the scripture, we are a new person because we have chosen to follow the Lord. Now, now understand this. Christ was beaten. He was crucified. He hung on the cross for each of us. And that alone takes away the sin in our life and truly makes us a new person. But to receive the forgiveness for our sins or that old life or that old way or that sinful way, we have to accept this gift. You know, I could say to my kids, oh gosh, I love you guys so much. I'm going to give you each a new car. And they could say, hey, thanks, that's nice. And, and then they walk away. And unless they accept the gift, take the keys from my hand, get in the car and drive it away, they haven't received the gift. It's kind of still in my possession. So Christ died to take away our sins our infirmities, our oppressions and depressions. But unless we accept him as Savior and accept what he did, then we can't, we can't have those gifts. We can't walk in those gifts or we have it hard to. And then we don't believe what the word says about us. So we if, if, we are, if anyone is enfolded into Christ, we have become an entirely new person. And then next... It says that all that is related to the old order has vanished. Again, it's another confirmation. You know, the prior sentence says that we are an entirely new person. You know, but God is good. And he says it a second time so that we can really get it. The old order has vanished. The old lies we've believed about ourselves, they've vanished. The fact that we've been abandoned has vanished. The fact that our life piled in sin has vanished. The fact that our life that is riddled in pain, anxiety, depression has vanished. Those issues may still be manifested in your life. But take the first step to that freedom and believe that they were taken from us by what Christ did on the cross. Then we can walk in that victory or walk out that victory in our life. We have a, a father and he's a perfect father. We have an Abba father. And he wants us to so believe what he sent his son to do for us. He wants us to walk in that victory. Well, next, Paul goes on to say, behold, Everything is fresh and new. I love this. I can now receive what my Abba has done for me. It is fresh and it is new. The key is we need to go to him and find out what he wants to give us that is fresh and new. Is it a new life, a new heart, a new sense of peace, a new healthy body free of infirmities? What does the Father want to give you that is new? Please, guys, don't forget to ask. When we ask, he is obligated to answer because that's what his word says. In the scripture, it says, ask and the gift is yours. Seek and you'll discover. Knock and the door will be opened for you. Every persistent one will get what he asks for. 
Every persistent seeker will discover what he longs for, and everyone who knocks persistently will one day find an open door. Do you know of any parent who would give his hungry child, who give his hungry child who asked for food, a plate of rocks instead? Or when asked for a piece of fish, that parent would offer his child a snake instead? Ugh. If you, imperfect as you are, know how to lovingly take care of your children and give them what's best, how much more ready is your heavenly father to give wonderful gifts to those who ask him? And that was Matthew 7, uh, verses 7 through 12 in the Passion Translation. Right? Think about it. You know, as a parent, you want the best for your child. You would never put sickness on your child because you want to teach them a lesson. Well, neither would our father do that. You wouldn't withhold food from your children to punish them. You wouldn't provide for your children to punish them. Why would we think that the perfect father in heaven would do any of those things? And next, the scripture And Paul goes on to say, God has made all things new and reconciled us to himself. Well, he does it again. He repeats himself again. He has made all things new and he reconciled us to him. Could there be a better truth than being reconciled to our Abba Father? That means that he accepts us. It means that his love is unconditional. It means that we have a relationship with him. It means that he is our father. And it means that we are in the family of God. Ah, friends, there's nothing that we can compare this to. It is the best of the best. And then the last part of that verse, but let me go back and let me just read the whole whole thing again and then I'll address and identify the last. It says, now, If anyone is enfolded into Christ, he has become an entirely new person. All that is related to the old order has vanished. Behold, everything is fresh and new. And God has made all things new and reconciled us to himself. And given us the ministry of reconciling others to God. So just as a little kind of brief summary here, you know, before Christ, it was only the high priest that could have access to to God in the Holy of Holies of the temple. It was only the high priest and and the Holy of Holies was so holy (laughs) and so much power was in that room that when the high priest would go in there to lay the sins of the people on, on the altar, that they would literally tie a rope to his leg because if something happened while he was in the Holy of Holies, they would need to pull him out because no one, no one that, unless you had the authority to, could go into the Holy of Holies. That was how in the Old Testament times, the father was accessed. But because of what Jesus did for us on the cross, When he took his last breath, when he hung on that cross and said, it is finished, the curtain to the temple tore and it now gives us access to the father. And because we now have access to the father and we need, we need to, we need to develop that relationship. We then need to turn around and reconcile others to the Father. Once we know, understand, receive, and walk in the truth that we've been made new and we are reconciled to the most perfect Father there is, we now need to help reconcile others to the Father as well. We can't let that go. That is that is a calling that we are given. This means all of us. It's not just the church leadership. For far too long, the church has been nothing but pew sitters wanting to be filled and fed each week. And not that there's not, you know, anything wrong with wanting to be fed. But that's not where it should end. 
I believe we've been doing church wrong all these years. I believe that the Protestant church is nothing more than the Catholic church without the worship of Mary and the saints. It's, it's basically the same. Go in, sing some songs. You know, the Catholic church sings a few hymns. Get a message, you know, read the word, get a message, sing some more songs, maybe take communion, and it's over. Maybe we throw in some announcements in there. But it's pretty much the same format, except maybe the Protestants, you know, church uses maybe a little more lively music. I believe the church, or as Christ calls it, is his ecclesia is to go to the gates, tear them down. The gates, the gates that are in the communities that are operating in evil and tear them down and bring in his kingdom. You know, what are those gates? They're, they're areas of life where Satan, the enemy has infiltrated, controlled or, or oppressed. We have to go and tear down those gates and bring in his kingdom. I don't see that happening. Are we healing the sick? Are we raising the dead? Because that's what the word of God says. Just read Mark 16, the last verse in Mark 16, what he's called us to do. Yes, we must do that. And I believe that each of us has the responsibility to help reconcile those the Lord puts in our life back to the Father. We need, we need to guide them, love them, and help them see that they have a heavenly father that adores them. They have a heavenly father that looks down from heaven and says to the angels, do you see, do you see Sally over there? How about, how about Robert? Do you see Robert or, or James? Oh gosh, look at James. Those, those are my girls. Those are my boys. He's a proud father. And when he is reconciled back to us, he is so delighted and happy. And the angels are rejoicing. Oh gosh, friends, are you struggling with the fact that you are his beloved child and that he knew you before you were born? He knew of you. He wrote you in the Lamb's Book of Life. And he sent his son to take away your sins so that you can now have full access to him. You don't need to go through a priest or a pastor or the prophets. The veil has been torn and we have full access to our heavenly father and he's waiting for you. Oh gosh, friends, will you walk into his open, loving arms? Mm, I hope you choose to. And I hope once again, you've been blessed by my teaching. Listen to it a few times so that you can let the truth of the word get in you, become real to you, live in your heart and not let your circumstances um, take over. I, I bless you and I ask that he would fill you until you overflow with his goodness. You know, developing our walk with Christ is crucial to living the life that he came to give us. And if you feel dry and empty, then perhaps head on over to my teaching platform, you know, called givingyouafreshstart.com. And there you'll find my teaching, I gave Christ my heart, now what? There's so much rich, richness in those teachings to help guide you in your walk with him. <laughs> and the best part, they're free. You'll find 30 teachings with study guides and promptings and questions and things to help you with your walk in the Lord. Do you, do you love to read? And do you get encouraged through others' journeys? Well, then click the link below and get my book on Amazon. Can I have your heart, Daddy? You know, when the Lord gave me the title to that book, and he gave it to me many years ago, I want to say 2005, and I wrote it in, I think, 21, 2021. So I had the title in my, in my writings for a while. But when he gave me the title to the, to the book, I thought, well, that, this is strange. Really, Lord? Is that what you really want me to call the book? Now, I did not have the contents to the writing at that point. All I had was the title of the book. And 
I thought it was strange, but I said, geez, do we really have to ask for your heart? Well, sadly, many of us think we do. But he freely gave it to us when he sent Jesus down to the earth to operate and live as the Son of Man. He wants us to have his heart. and We just need to say yes. Remember, it's like me wanting to give my children that a gift of a new car and they, you know, thank me and walk away and don't take the keys. Same thing. He wants us to have his heart. We just need to say yes. So, my friends, be blessed, be encouraged, and know that you are love. And of course, if you're ready to make some changes in your life and you want to be supported along the way, consider my coaching program. I would love to walk alongside you. Be blessed. Be encouraged. Thanks for listening. Well, thank you, my friends, for taking the time to listen to my podcast. I hope you found it uplifting and encouraging and that it guides you to having peace, joy, love, and health in your life. If you would like more information on the services I offer, go to my website, reginasanchez.com. Or if you're ready to dive into my teachings, head on over to givingyouafreshstart.com. This is where I will teach you how to start fresh on different aspects of your life. You can also find my book, Can I Have Your Heart, Daddy, on Amazon. Be blessed, be encouraged, and know that you are loved.